Radio Retro Future. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Denkard Lexicon, and welcome to the Steampunk Beginner's Guide. But before we move on to today's topic, first this. A quick shout out to viewer Martin Monster Manson, who was so kind to send us the pictures of his costume inspired by the Steampunk Beginner's Guide. And also a thank you to Sky Pirate Marshal Jake Douglas, who was inspired by this show and fellow steampunkers to write down his adventures in a journal. We already talked about steampunk characters in episode number 5, but that was from the aesthetic perspective. Today, we will be discussing how to write steampunk characters, or more specifically, characters in high concept stories. Because if anything, we like our steampunk to be cyberpunk in the past, and steampunk, as most sci-fi, is a high concept genre. Unlike low concept, which focuses on character development, high concept stories focus on a single premise, like a specific situation or a question like, what if? Characters are there to explore human behavior under certain conditions rather than being the subject of the story itself. It doesn't mean there is no character development, just that the way or how the development happens is determined by the setting rather than the other way around. I know it all sounds a bit vague, but you have to realize that writing is a skill and writing science fiction is a very specific discipline. What separates sci-fi characters from most typical personas is they are setting specific. You won't fight an airship captain in a historical setting, if you know what I mean. You could of course play with the concept like in the book World War Z that includes a character who is a copyright lawyer specialized in 1980s music who must survive a zombie epidemic. But I digress. These days there is an entire steampunk subculture online where people post their OCs or original characters. It is not something I grew up with myself. Personally I think the art is the most noteworthy aspect about it. I noticed much of these characters are often described in video game terms. These include details such as their special attacks or other combat related abilities. But well, this generation grew up with video games, so it's not surprising that people write their characters as if they are filling in a D&D character sheet. It works for Games Workshop. So, how does one make an interesting character background? These are the basic questions one should be able to answer. 1. Where does the character come from? 2. Where does he or she want to go? And most importantly, 3. Where is the character now? Where the character comes from speaks for itself. This could be social background, profession, love, losses and traumas. Things that shape the character's worldview, likes and dislikes. This tends to be something a lot of writers get stuck on. Often OCs tend to get all these movie moments. And of course they are related to famous characters or are students of the best masters. Hold on you guys, I actually have another power. I can see into the future too, but better than Kyle. Let me try. It does not make good characters. God damn it, Carmen, you can't keep making up powers. I am Blurag, and I have lots and lots of powers. A good character history explains where the character wants to go in the future. For example, the character is a poor immigrant who gets inspired by people in the local mafia, so now he wants to become a gangster himself. So the real story is how he gets from being a poor alley rat to being a hardened criminal. Now this is a typical example of character development. Sure there is a high concept there, but it's inferior to the character's progression. From now on you only get to have one power, so what is it? I have the power to have all the powers I want. Naturally there are obstacles, the law being one. There is also the personal hurdles. What acts is he willing to commit? What is he willing to sacrifice? These struggles are a lot more interesting than the weapon he happens to carry under his shoulder. So how about steampunk and cyberpunk concepts? Now the setting within the genre is often based on what if questions. This often translates into societies that are based on a certain premise. Be it an ideological system where everybody is on drugs or technology that has been monopolized by a single corporation. I'll refer to this status quo 
That's the system from now on. The system can't be wrong. Now, steampunk is a form of alternate history where some form of technological advancement has changed the timeline as we know it. The characters in these stories often represent certain aspects of the system or sides of the argument that a writer wants to explore. High concept stories want to explore ideas, philosophies or complex situations. The biggest challenge for the writer is to describe the various implications in an appealing way. A major pitfall in this regard is that the characters of entire civilizations become mere representations of the arguments or caricatures. This happens when writers become so focused on communicating the idea to the audience, the actors become metaphors first and characters second. If at all. See Bonsert Steam Boy review for an example of that. Now, what types of characters are there? Characters are a combination of tropes and storytelling techniques. These roles are not set in stone and often change during the course of a story. The best known trope is the fish out of water. These are characters who are newly introduced to the system and the underlying ideas. The audience learns about the workings of the system as the protagonist does. And sometimes this character introduces new perspectives into the world. For example, the viewer learns about the Force as Luke Skywalker learns the way of the Jedi. The system can't be wrong. The second role is that of the insider, who is already fully aware of how the system works. The world gets explained from his or her perspective, but doesn't necessarily know the truth. This character is part or benefits from the system. He might be a conformist like Tom Nettworthy in the book version of Mortal Engines, or it might be an enforcer of the system. See Minority Report, Repo or District 9. It could also be someone who needs the system to survive at all, such as the vampires and daybreakers. Nothing wrong with the system, it is perfect, I agree. These characters are often more than happy to comply, or even promote the system until it is turned against them. In Minority Report, Tom Cruise's character becomes a victim of the precog system that he enforced. Now they need to run from or even fight the system and often become hackers. Our third role, the hacker, in this case is not a computer nerd, but someone who uses the system in ways it was not supposed to. Neo in the Matrix is a computer hacker at the beginning of the story, doing things that are not allowed. Then he turns out to be someone who can change the Matrix to his will, a magic super hacker, so to speak, who is the biggest threat to the machines. This is why computer hackers are such popular tropes in cyberpunk. Every system has unintended consequences. They find loopholes in systems, making them work in their favor or, well, against the system. We create networks and structures to create order, and then a hacker comes along and creates chaos. It is why these characters work so well as protagonists and antagonists alike. Mostly, these hackers are criminals who use technology in illegal ways. Each high-concept story has a list of criminal acts specific to its setting. Ghost in the Shell explores the topic of possible cybercrimes like personality replication, VR drugs, etc. It also could be something a little bit more fantastical like the trade of organs from paranormal creatures. Traitors, dissenters, and all those betrayed by those in power often become hackers by default, because they need to use their insider knowledge to evade or sabotage the system that is used to hunt them. These former insiders also become fish out of water because they learn about a underworld that subverts the system. Also renegade type characters who are both hackers and insiders at the same time are not uncommon. A matter of fact, it are just such characters that often are the antagonists in such stories, such as corrupt politicians or system operators. The outcasts, on the other hand, are outside of the system, whether they want it or not. They do not benefit nor suffer directly from it. It could be for many reasons. 
Maybe they are allergic to the drugs, unfit for the technology, or simply cannot afford it. They could also be exiles or simply were not part of the happy few who were allowed to get into the system. The point is they are not allowed to participate, giving them unique perspectives and ambitions within the setting. So how does one communicate complex social structures and the character's role within that? It's time to talk about characterization. Now one could of course list a number of traits about a character like on a character sheet. So avoid descriptive sentences such as good kind inventor who turns toasters into death rays and enjoys long walks around the family's cotton fields. Seriously? What? What? Really? What? Yeah. Again, the rule here is show don't tell, because nobody enjoys reading spreadsheets. Oh, characterization can be done in two ways, directly and indirectly. Direct characterization is when the narrative makes a clear statement about something or someone, like this person is evil or clumsy, but in the end a character is judged indirectly by its actions no matter what a writer directly says about it. What would you say you do here? I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. Stating them directly is efficient, but it's dull and can be contradicted by a character's actions if the writer is not careful. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Indirect characterization means the reader must interpret the character's traits by means of actions and decisions. One more punch would kill you. That somehow means I win. I go to jail, escape, kill people, rinse and repeat. Yes, it's an endless cycle, but I've sworn to let the courts do their work. This is inefficient, but is far more engaging and leaves room for the audience to have their own take on events. So when writing a bio, don't state stuff like kind, friends with everyone or I am good at dealing with people. Describe why a character is kind, how a character interacts with people <laughs> and what makes him or her a technical servant. So let's say the character is an officer on an airship on Her Majesty's Navy who wants to command his own ship one day, but every time a promotion comes up, some incompetent mouth breather gets the position he was eyeing. He also gets to risk his life on suicidal operations ordered by moronic admirals who give those orders in service of an ungrateful population. And you know what? Maybe he decides it is time to promote himself. I'm sure I cannot relate to that. Oh well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end this week's episode. Don't forget that if you'd like to show off your art or costumes, you can contact us to Facebook or Discord. And if you really want to support our show, you can do so and subscribe star. And with that being said, make things your way. Good night. What? And then he broke the door crutch.